Hi, I'm Ben Pascoe for LearningSurfPhotography.com and I'm going to show you a brand new lens I've just received. It's the um, Mika 6.5mm f2 lens, it's a fisheye. Um, so the brand is M-E-I-K-E, -E, Chinese brand. I think they pronounce it Mika in their videos, other people will pronounce it Mika. Um, looks a bit like Mika maybe, but anyway. Regardless, they produce this manual focus, manual aperture, fisheye lens for the Sony E-mount system. They also do it for um, the EOS M, like Canon's mirrorless mount, um, the Fuji system and the Micro Four Third system. So they, they provide a different mount for each of those. Price-wise, it's, it's pretty cheap. It's $149 in the US or $125.99 in the UK. Links below if you want to go and buy it. I bought mine from amazon.co.uk and it took 12 days to arrive. Um, came obviously from China. I uh, didn't have to pay any import duties or anything. So I was expecting to pay a little bit, so that was, that was good news. Um, and this is the first time I've opened it up. So not a great deal of packaging in the box, but you do get a little cloth, lens cloth with it. So that might be useful. Pop that there. Uh, I'm gonna be comparing this one throughout the, the um, this unboxing or the kind of first impressions to the Samyang 8mm fisheye. So um, I've got a video which compares the version one to version two of the Samyang 8mm f2.8 fisheye, which I use a lot on the Sony a6000 for my surf photography. I use it with a uh, water housing and a dome port like this. So a lot of the um, reviews or, or the ones I've seen online of this lens, there wasn't much around when I, when I ordered it 12 days ago, but um, now there's a couple and they kind of position it as a um, bit of a kind of gimmick, a bit of a toy lens, like, like a lot of fish eyes are. For this price, the $150 mark, it's, it's about as good a value fish eyes you can get for, um, for a nice interchangeable lens camera like this. So quick unboxing, you get a little lens pouch. Quite nice, got like a soft surface on the inside, like nylon or something with a drawstring, quite useful. Another soft lens cloth, so that's good, got two of those now. Guarantees, little silica gel pack. Um, it's quite nicely packaged inside here. It's got a nice little hole so you can pull it out. It's part of the cardboard protective packaging and sits inside another cardboard bit. So what can I tell you about this? It says APS-C, that's the sensor size for the um, Sony E-mount. Um, so obviously, I guess it's designed for that or, or they just printed it on for this mount version, I don't know, because they do do the Micro Four Thirds version, which is a bit smaller. Um, I even saw on Amazon.com a listing for, um, for the Nikon One mount system, which is even smaller again. So apparently they, they do do it for that mount as well, but I only found the one listing on Amazon. It's early days yet. So, this is the beast. Um, that rattle is just the, the back cap was a little bit loose on the back of the lens. So let's open this up. Okay. Right, feels good, all metal. I kind of knew that, I was expecting that. And it's like a rubberized grip on the focus ring, which turns really nice and smooth. Doesn't change the length of the lens when you turn the focus ring. Uh, well, that's a bit different to what I was expecting. Oh, hang on, no, I was doing it wrong. <laughs> so the, the aperture ring is not clicked, so you don't get a, a click when you hit each kind of marking or each um, stop as you go along. It's marked up at F2, which is the widest aperture, and it's like a hard stop there. F4, F8, and F22, where it stops again. Um, you've got the focus, range which does go kind of beyond infinity so um, very similar in that regard to the Samyang lens and then what's the smallest marking it's got on focus so the smallest marking is mm, it's kind of beyond 0.3 feet beyond 0.1 meters kind of before 0.1 meters so I think the um, I think they list it as about five centimeters five centimeters for um, for the closest focus distance, which is gonna be really useful in surf photography for shooting underwater. Um, to get underwater photos in focus, you need to focus really close to the um, the dome port because it, it, there's lots of technical reasons, but I'll go into that in more detail with the Samyang 
um, video review that you can see. So in terms of size, it's take the lens cap off. First of all, Samyang has a kind of clip-on lens cap, which clips into the inside of the lens hood, which is really good, never come off, um, really useful. The maker, which has got a kind of friction, it's just held in place by friction. On the inside of here, there's like a bit of tape with some, with some soft texture on it. So, and that fits around this smooth metal ring on the outside. Doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. Um, I had a very similar one to this with an old um, Peleng, like a Russian built fisheye, eight mil, that I used to use on my Canon. Um, and to be honest, the, after a while, this lens, the lens cap on the Peleng would, would kind of slip and come off, but let's see if that one, this one works any better. That Peleng was quite a bit bigger, so this might be better than that. Works all right for now anyway. Um, so when you actually compare them in terms of how far the element is away, it's very similar. It's a fraction shorter than the Samyang. So the field of view on this is wider. It's 190 degrees. This is 180. Um, it's got a closer so, um, minimum focus distance, which is going to be a benefit for me for that. Um, it's slightly wider aperture, f2 rather than f2.8. So that might come in useful for astrophotography. I've done a couple of shots with my Samyang lenses like that, but um, I'm not, not too interested in it. So it's just literally a couple of I've had a couple of opportunities to try it out and I have done. That might come in useful. But in reality, for surf photography, you're, these days at least, <laughs> um, you're outside. You're not inside in some wave pool or anything yet. So you're outside. Generally, it's fairly sunny. Um, even in the evenings and things, you've still got plenty of light. You don't really need F2, which is good because you can stop that down to, I go for like F4 if it's really cloudy and, and dingy, um, or evening sessions or morning sessions. I go with F4 manual aperture so you've got to set it and then put it in your housing and if it's sunny i go for f8 with this one and then as fast a shutter speed as i can to freeze the action um unless i'm going for some sort of effect with slow shutter speeds and stuff so i like it the the aperture ring on the samyang is clicks so it kind of locks into place so you can tell you're definitely at f8 for instance and with the maker it's smooth so I think videographers like it that way, where it's smooth, because they do do a cine version of the Samyang. Um, I keep saying Samyang, but this is also available as a Rokinon branded lens. And I believe the cheapest one on Amazon.com right now is a Rokinon 8mm, which comes in at about $300. So twice the price exactly of this lens. So you can see why um, this one would be might, might be an option for a lot of people. Really well built, build quality, not much to choose between them. They're both kind of pretty solid. They've both got metal lens mounts. Um, size wise, this is the version one of the Samyang. This is the version two. So you can see the version two is bigger. So obviously it's quite a bit bigger than this one. But version one wise, I mean, in terms of size, they're very, very similar. There's not a lot in it at all, which is really good news for me because I've got this lens port on my Liquid IC 6000 housing which is designed for the um, Samyang version one fisheye. And I'm gonna see if it works with this. Uh, I might not get around to doing that in this actual video. This is more of a unboxing, just so I can figure out a few things about this lens. So what I will do um, is do some sample, different sample shots with the Samyang. I'll leave the camera on the tripod and we'll see what the difference in field of view is. And we'll see, um, various other bits and pieces, but I'll try and use the same settings for both and, and you can see then. So yeah, so let's pop it on the A6000 and actually see what it looks like when you take a photo. Standard back rear lens cap. Very, very similar to the, to the uh, Samyang as you can see. So don't think, no surprises there. Let's find the little red dot and line it up. Uh, so this whole front section is um, is the focus control. So the only bit which doesn't turn is this really narrow recessed ring. It's like far, five mil, five, six mil of recessed metal. So when you, and because this doesn't click and, and um, this spins really smoothly as well, that's a good thing. But when you're actually trying to twist it off and on of a lens, you can press the little button to remove it and you're just basically twisting the whole, because the whole thing twists. It's actually quite hard to grip that little thing. There you go, not a big deal, but something to bear in mind. So let's switch it on. 
Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, this is really good news. Okay, so when I was watching the video reviews of, of this one on YouTube, the sample shots they showed had like a crop at the top and the bottom of the frame. And that was a bit frustrating because um, you want a complete circle, basically. Why wouldn't you want a complete circle? Um, you either go for something like this one, the Samyang, which does a rectangular fisheye. Rectangular fisheye, you don't see any black borders around the edge of the frame in an ideal world. So I use this one for surf photography and, and for surf photography that's great, especially in small waves. You can't see anything, well, you, you f it fills the frame and it's 180 degree field of view. And um, because of it's just a wave and there's no people or buildings or anything right in the corners, you don't really notice the distortion and it makes small waves look massive. Or well, not massive, but you can't really tell the size of a, of a wave very easily unless there's a person in it if you're shooting fisheye. So you'll see shots from um, um, various people like uh, Russell, Russ Ord, um, photographer in West Oz who, who shoots fisheye photos at the right, the, the well-known big wave slab out there in West Oz. And if there wasn't a person in it, it's, it'd be really hard to tell how big that wave was. And when you see the person in it, you're amazed that, that he's out there swimming and shooting in it because it's, it's incredible that anyone would do that. Um, but then again, if you see a one foot wave and there's no one in it, it could be a head high wave. So pros and cons. But to give you an idea, this is, this is what's cool about it. When you take a still photo, it gives you the full image circle. So there's nothing cropped off at the top or the bottom, um, which is really, really good news. Um, unfortunately for video, there you go, that's shooting video of me now. On the A6000, it does kind of crop it a bit to get the, the 1080p resolution. Well, it's not to get that, I don't know why they do it. It's some technical reason where you don't use the full sensor. Um, someone no doubt will be able to explain that much better than I will. But it means that if you shoot video with this lens, it crops the top and the bottom off. Not ideal. Not ideal if you want to do, say for instance, 360 degree um, photospheres that you can do with cameras like this, which is the LG 360 and the Ricoh Theta, which I've also used in the past, and the new Nikon Key Mission. So these, each of these lenses is effectively something like this. And they take one sh shot that way, one shot that way, and then there's overlap here, which you can then stitch together because it goes 190 degrees beyond 180. So one idea I had was to, if, fingers crossed, this fits in my C6000 or one of my other housings with a dome port, then I was thinking, like, oh, maybe you could, do, you could put them back to back, two A6000s back to back, or A6500s, whatever, and then you'd have full 360, I don't know how many megapixels it would be once you stitched it, but you know, it'd be around, I don't know, 40 of a uh, um, photosphere, which would be incredible. Um, so it'd be effectively like having one of these, but at super high resolution. But you couldn't do that with video because it crops it. And I'm not sure, thinking about it now, whether the A6300 and, and 6500, which shoot in 4K, perhaps they, they don't crop the top and bottom for video. I'll have to investigate that, don't know for sure. I'll put a little message at the bottom to find out once I've found out in a minute. Impressed, first impressions, solid, very, very um, equivalent to the Samyang 8mm f2.8 fish eyes that I've got. Um, and that is definitely a compliment. I love these lenses. Watch my video of these two and, and you'll find out lots of sample shots of those. I'm going to compare the two. Hi, Ben Pasco from Learning Surf Photography. Here again, I've now used the Maker 6.5mm f2 fisheye, circular fisheye, with my A6000 in the sea to, surf, uh, to shoot some surf shots a couple of times now. So I wanted to give you a quick rundown of uh, the different things that I've um, experienced, uh, pros and cons, um, and why I'm uh, pretty excited about this new lens, actually. So originally, um, my fisheye of choice was the Samyang 8mm. I've got the version 1 which I use with my Liquid IC 6000 housing, and I've got the version two, which I've used with my Salty Surf housings. So size-wise, with the unboxing, I noted that the Maker 6.5mm and the Samyang 8mm are very, very similar in terms of where the, the front element sits, um, distance from the, the body to the front element, which is great because my Liquid IC 6000 port is designed for the 8mm Samyang version 1 and that means the Maker 6.5mm circular fisheye fits in there perfectly 
um, and I don't see any black borders around it at all. I get the full 190 degrees image circle onto my um, A6000 sensor. I'll show you a few examples as we go through this. So um, a couple of things I've noticed shooting with it. Um, obviously it is a full circular fisheye. So when you first see the image, um, so like the, the full frame of your A6000 camera, you see a circle within it and big black borders around it. Um, so you're kind of instinctively thinking, oh, I think I've, you think, you feel like you've missed out on some of that shot because if you're using a diagonal fisheye like the Samyang 8mm, you don't see any black borders at all. So it appears as though you get capturing everything. But what happens with the fisheye is, um, well, all lenses, I guess, um, there's a circular image projected from, from the lens onto the sensor. Uh, so with a diagonal fisheye, the, the sensor kind of fits perfectly, perfectly within the circle. I'm going to put up a diagram so you can see what I'm talking about. It's also in my blog post, learningsurfphotography.com. I've got a blog post which will explain this as well. But a circular one, it squeezes that same image circle into the size of the sensor so you get the whole image. So you're not actually missing out on anything. You're, if anything, you're seeing a lot more. Um, so once you get your head around it, the circular fisheye, as long as you've got enough resolution from that section of your sensor, so on the A6000, 6300, 6500, the sensor's 24 megapixels. So that circle within it is obviously quite a lot less than 24 megapixels. Um, if you crop it square, which kind of still obviously has the black borders around the sides, it works out at about seven and a half megapixels. So if you crop the, um, to the same aspect ratio as the A6000 image. I'll show you uh, um, myself doing this in Lightroom so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. The resulting image is about seven megapixels, which is plenty for printing out up to kind of A4 size, give or take. A lot of people have a different idea of what, what's acceptable. But what I've done in Lightroom is, because uh, I wanted to do a kind of almost like for like comparison between the, the maker and the Samyang and the final results you get from them. So you can see here, this is one of my shots from uh, using the Samyang 8mm. That was actually the, that was the version one. So um, this is a shot from the Maker 6.5mm circular fisheye, which I've proce processed in Adobe Lightroom. And um, in terms of the actual image quality and the resolution, I can put these side by side and I've shown a couple of people and no one can really tell the difference. Um, obviously the image quality at the corners uh, and the edges, um, it's a bit blurrier, lots of different factors involved there, but, but you get the same thing with the Samyang, but less so, definitely sharper. But um, this is certainly acceptable for me and I would feel fine printing them out. I mean, I wouldn't normally print out this shot. It was not, not a perfect, not really good light, but um, I wanted to compare the two and uh, yeah, they compare really, really well for anything up to that size. And if you're printing much bigger than that, then you expect the person looking at the, the print to be further away. So the resolution of the really fine details matters less and less the further you are away and the bigger the print is. So I'm really, really happy with the, the image quality. Um, and considering that the maker is significantly cheaper, it's about half the price of the, of the Samyang slash rocking on 8mm version 2, um, $145 roughly for the Maker and about $300 for the Samyang at the moment, or rocking on rather. They're the same lens, they're just called different things. I've got a whole video on those as well, so um, I do really would rate it. Fantastic lens. But this is really, really exciting because not only does it allow you to get, basically process the images a little bit and print out in exactly the same way as you would with the, the Samyang, there's a couple of advantages too. So first one is pretty basic. It doesn't have any white lettering around the outside of the lens and the Samyang, both versions do. And you can see them in reflections on the dome port coming back in certain conditions. So that's something you can obviously get around that by covering up the writing with uh, either kind of coloring over it with some permanent marker or covering it with tape or something like that, I imagine would work. But uh, you'd have to worry about that with, this, with the, the maker. Pretty minor, but it's a little bonus. Obviously, the main advantage is you get the whole image circle. So you're getting a lot more kind of visual information coming in through the lens and captured. Um, and if you're not worried about the resolution, like I'm not, 
because I, I can see it's for my purposes it's in, indistinguishable once you printed it out um, then that gives you many, many more kind of creative options once you've got that image um, so one thing real simple thing is this horizon's a bit wonky and that's just because my hand was a bit wonky when I took the shot I could have straightened it but I'd miss out on the the nice kind of lip hitting the, the face there. So I could probably do some magic in Photoshop and just straighten the middle or something, but um, instead of doing that with the maker, you can just rotate the image around, rotate the crop and straighten it out. And obviously it's a circle, so you just rotate that circle, you've still got all the, all the data there. I can be shooting whichever angle I want, this, 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 this doesn't matter because I can straighten it afterwards and then do the processing. So that's a, a pretty good bonus. Um, and obviously it's cheaper, another bonus as well. Um, and then you've got the whole idea of having, capturing a 190 degree circular image means you're basically capturing everything kind of like that in a big circle all the way around. So as I mentioned in the unboxing, if you have that image and you have another one back to back, then you can create a 360 degree photosphere. So obviously at the moment I'd only have one maker lens um, and I've only got one housing that works with it so I could buy two and put them back to back somehow but what I've done for the meantime is I've flipped one of the shots so I've got the, the 360 um, spher um, spherical uh, circular image on one side mirror it round you can do all this in Lightroom really easily export those as kind of high resolution JPEGs then you can import them into a, a piece of software. There's quite a few bits of software that do it, but the f there's one that's free and I've used and, and um, I'll show you the results of it in a second. It's called Hugin or Hugin, it's H-U-G-I-N. Um, and it's not very intuitive software at all. It's, it's kind of built for, for piecing together panoramas and, and from 360 spheres and things with, using lots of different shots. So um, it's not like a click and, and it all sorts itself out, but I did a little bit of experimenting and I managed to get a reasonable result using one of my shots from the maker and then flipping it and then building a photosphere out of those two shots. And I'll show you some video of, um, it's actually captured from my phone because the phone, your phone is probably the thing that you'd want to watch, view these things back on. Um, in a headset is ideal. So I've, um, I've done this, got this same image that I've, I'll show you on the screen and I'll show you the, the video of the, the kind of 2D version with my phone where you're just moving it around. Um, it's a lot harder to show you what it looks like obviously in a 360 thing, but I'll, I'll post on learningsurfphotography.com. I'll put up the, the image. So if you've got a um, like a Google Cardboard or Samsung Gear VR or just a phone which has a gyroscope and accelerometer in it, then you can view that um, using some special, you don't even need special software these days, you do it in your web browser click the button and then you can look around as if you're in the tube. And I've, I've kind of uh, mirrored it so it looks like, a, like an A-frame tube. So it's a bit weird, a bit disconcerting and, and you can see the, the point where it's mirrored. But um, with a bit of Photoshop, you can easily patch that up and make it look a lot more realistic or at least less obviously fake. I think you could just kind of skirt around that, that mirror line, um, pull a few bits either side and I reckon it would look really nice. So that's something brand new that I can do with this lens that I couldn't do with any other lens I've got. Um, so yeah, I mean, short story, I'm, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I think anyone who, like me, isn't worried about resolution too much. I guess the other thing is, if you do a lot of um, sending the images straight from your camera to your phone to edit them and then post them on social media like Instagram or something, which I do, it's a bit trickier, obviously, to edit those images, crop and manipulate like you can in Lightroom to get like a nice high resolution squeezing all that circular information into the rectangular frame. It, Lightroom's really powerful at doing that. Um, but you can still do the basics, you can crop, you can still get basically, I mean, for the resolution you need on, on Instagram, you can still do that. So yeah, I think unless you're shooting professionally and you really need cr the crispest, highest resolution diagonal fisheye images that you can oh and also i guess as long as you've got a, um, a housing with a port that will accept this lens which i think is rare because the c6000 is is like the most compact housing and um the distance from the 
um, from the body to the element means, for instance, this wouldn't work in the um, in the salty surf housing with the port I've got. It might be possible with a different port, but I'm not sure it would be kind of physically possible because of the way the front it's a kind of front loading housing rather than this back loading one. Um, I reckon you could figure it out if you had an old housing that you'd that you'd converted. It does fit inside the um, Mekon cheap housing, but obviously I'll show you an, an example of the shot taken with this lens in this housing and it's just, yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to use it really. It's not worth it. Just shoot with your, your 16mm um, kit lens or your, your Sigma 19mm because you'll get just as wide a field of view and much better resolution. But if you've got a housing, which I think at the moment is probably one that you've built or modified yourself or the Liquid IC 6000, and you want to take the kind of photo that you can't get with any other type of lens. Um, it's going to really set you apart from, so like GoPro shooting, for instance. So that's one thing. The Samyang is great. I love it. And I love shooting fisheye diagonal or whatever in the surf. But it is effectively very similar to a GoPro. If I was shooting side by side with a, the 8mm Samyang and a GoPro Hero 3, 3 plus, 4, 5, whatever, um, with a Connect pistol grip, probably to make it a bit easier. If I shot side by side with those two, if it was a nice sunny day, there wouldn't be a great deal of difference between the two resultant shots. Um, so if you want to set yourself apart and you're moving from like a GoPro to say like a Sony A6000, this is like a really, really interesting lens. Um, and like I say, with a little bit of post-production, if you're willing to be patient and take the time to do it, then you can not only reproduce the same sort of shots you can get with Samyang, but you can create brand new types of, of interactive kind of media that you, you'd you never uh, be able to do with any other type of lens. So super exciting, really, really great budget lens. I'm really, really happy with the printouts. I'm really happy with my 360 photo spheres. I've only used it in waves twice. It's not been very good. The light hasn't been great. The waves were okay. But I'm super excited about getting out in really good waves. I really want to see what, what it can kind of come up with. Um, but yeah, this maker, 6.5mm f2 circular fisheye, liquid IC6000 housing for the A6000 camera. Such a great combo. You'll be kind of, you'll have so many creative options that you wouldn't have done otherwise. Um, so I just think, yeah, I'd buy one. I mean, if you've got that housing already, um, and even if you have got the, the Samyang, if you can, if you want to do something a bit different, if you want to experiment with some new style of um, kind of surf photography, which not many people are doing at all because it just hasn't been possible up until now, not easily. The other kind of circular fish eyes you can get, I think Sigma do one, which is like a 4.5 mil. The the 4.5 mil Sigma was like is like eight or nine hundred dollars, I think. Um, and there's a lens baby one, which oh God, I forgot to look up the price, but I'll put it below here. Um, it's definitely not as cheap as $145, I think. Maybe it is, in which case, I'll have a look at it. But it might not be as fast either. I'm gonna put the details right there, and hopefully it's saying something like lens baby fish eye, $400 f3.5 or something. I might be way off, so just read instead of uh, listen on that one. But I think it's probably one of the best value um, surf photography lenses for someone who's looking for something interesting. Um, but like I say, be cautious because it was kind of total luck that it works with one of the housings I've got. Um, if you've already got the liquid eye housing and the port for the version one Samyang, you're in luck. Um, grab one of these Maker 6.5 mils and, and see what you can come up with. Plus, I mean, it's a fun lens anyway, just in general. Um, that was it, pretty much. Uh, Video-wise, haven't really bothered because it crops off the top and the bottom of the circle, which is kind of defeats the object of having a circular fish eye. So I haven't bothered doing any video at all. Look forward to using it more, especially when the light's good. Um, Go to learningsurfphotography.com and I'll show you uh, my 360 degree photosphere that I made and you can see links to where you can get hold of it for um, for that bargain price on Amazon, $144, $145 maybe. Um, yeah, grab one while you can. I think they're great. And uh, thanks very much for watching.